Cameron Smith joins us on a uh, Monday morning. Cameron, were you a footy card collector back in the day? Good morning. Uh, good morning, fellas. Um, I used to get um, – Brandy might remember this, although he was probably playing at the time. I used to get the uh, – was it the stickers? The stickers mm. from the, the packs of – there, there was some chewy in them, and you mm. used to um, open stickers. them up. And, and it was a yeah, book, right? You'd get a book. you get an annual yeah. book. And you oh, had to yeah. collect them. Yeah, and you'd, you'd yeah. put the stickers mm. inside the book. Yeah, and collect them all. So well, that was my... Well, famously, Cameron, the sticker yeah. where Gary Jack, the, the the year they had stickers, Gary Jack, yeah. um, there was a photo of him with the junk out, junk out the shorts. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and, they, and it made was it onto a sticker. That was on the stickers. That was, uh, the stickers. Yeah, that yeah. was a sticker here, Gary Jack. I, junk I, don't out. Remember, I don't remember getting that one. No. No. Collectors <laughs> on um, but uh, do you have a favorite, footy cards of your own? Because you would have... Um, you know, your kids, like, did they collect? Like, Dad, I got you, I got you, I got a Cameron oh, Smith card or not? No, or that, they swapped that. They traded no, that one. No, no, no. For really, Billy Slater. Not really. <laughs> they, uh, they, um, no, they, they got the, uh, the NRL trading cards. Um, and yeah. I think they've, they've actually got a whole folder of them each, I believe. No, nice. but they, they, no, they, they would be collectors. They, they enjoyed when they got Ugh. dad coming out of a packet. So, Ugh. all sitting at home in a cupboard now. Now that I'm finished, they don't, they don't care. Flicks. Did kids, did kids in, these days still play flicks with cards? Probably not, because they come at a no, premium in the price. But no, back in the no. day, you used to play flicks at school, and you'd, yeah. you know, you dump off your junk cards there mm. and try and pick up, you know, like a Brandy Alexander. You know, you throw out a Stu Galbraith or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just you know, the players you didn't want, and you yes. try and pick up a good one, a game of flicks. Yes. Uh, the world was okay. so much more simple flicks. than this. Mm. Yeah, let, let's talk a bit of footy. Um, I don't think, and we've spoken briefly about it, but I, I don't think there's a side in the competition. Um, we've got Mitch Moses out for the Parramatta Eels. We've got we've had Nathan Cleary out for the Panthers. Mm. I don't think there's a side in the competition like Newcastle where if one player is missing, um, mm. they're in a lot of trouble. And they even in the form that Kalen Ponga has been in before yesterday, been in great form. Um, mm they're still losing football games. Um, so without him at all, and that's looking likely for, a, I don't know how serious this foot injury is, but it's a ligament. And we know, you know, they can be, they can be two, three, four months on the sidelines. Mm. Uh, they're in a lot of trouble the nights um, without Kalen Ponga. Yeah. Well, he's been, yeah. Yeah. Well, everyone's aware of the form that he was in last year or the, the way that he finished the year, particularly those, final 11 rounds that it resulted in a Dalian medal right um the performances that he put in and he's carried on really in similar fashion in these early rounds I've seen it I've seen it in a um the preseason games that they played particularly the one where they played the storm in Fiji now they were never in the match but the most dangerous player in a, in a Knights jersey was Caelan Ponga like he he still he was a handful for the Melbourne Storm and he's been that way in the opening seven weeks for Newcastle as well. Like last week, yeah, take away the, the injury on the weekend um, against the Bulldogs, but you know, the week before against the Roosters, started like a house on fire. It looked like Newcastle going to put 40 on the dogs. Then he picks up that hip pointer injury and he doesn't come good. Like that was in the 20th minute, something like that, right? Mm-hmm. And he doesn't come good until like the, the last 15 minutes of the match. You and Newcastle were there. gone, yeah. Brandy. They were gone. Yeah. And then when he come good... <laughs> He nearly won it for him, mm. so it's incredible, you know, the the impact that Kalen Ponga has on this footy side now. Whether he's that that far ahead of everyone else at the moment, and and that's why he's having that impact on that footy side. I'm to, not too sure, but I look across their football side, and they've got they've got some capable players playing in other positions. So I think it's time that everyone else in that footy team they they need to step up, and and stop relying on Kalen to produce something because I think that's what it looks like when, when they get in a situation where things aren't happening for them or, you know, the opposition might be a, a try or two up. Everyone just looks over to Kalen and says, well, come on, mate, do something for us. <laughs> it's just, yeah, you know, exactly like it's, right. they're going to have to change, change their attitude your now every two weeks. Can you, you that's what's happening gone. at the moment. Um, so between the three players, Cogger, Gamble, Hastings, it's a different mm. combo every two weeks out of the three players. And again, mm. yesterday, Gamble comes back yesterday. Cogger ends up playing New South Wales Cup. That's not a good yeah. sign. Yeah, well, it's hard. It's not just the combination between the halves, Vossi. Like, it, it's it's hard with to build a relationship, you know, with the f- middle forwards 
And then also, more importantly, you sort of your edge players, particularly your back rowers, they're the ones that work most closely with those halves. Um, you know, you get all your timing and 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 um, those combinations, as I said, between the back rower and and your seven and six. So they're the ones. Right. You know, all that timing between those two players, more than any anyone else, they're the ones that create opportunities for those outside men, like for your fullbacks, for your centers, for your wingers that provide space on the outside to score points. So, yeah, it's a bit hard when you're chopping and changing all the time. Overall, though, overall, though, aside of that, I, I think Newcastle, they just, they, they don't look like they have that same sort of mindset or attitude that they took into those those 10 matches at the end of the year. It looks like there's, like, it looks like they're trying to be the Knights of 2023, well, it's a new year. Just f- forget about that. Like you finish the season really strong. Just attack this year like it's mm. a new opportunity. Yeah, slipping, slipping away. Uh, bottom four at the moment. What about the tunnel incident? You, you, we, we like it's. It's not the biggest incident we have, but you're obliged to talk about because you never, you don't see it. It's, it's, mm. it's happened. Cameron, what should be done here? Uh, what, what, what action needs to be taken? Is it? As Brandy says, the, the Newcastle officials who didn't get Jack Hethering, that's the first letdown of the whole process. They didn't get mm. Jack into the dressing room. Like, what, what did they think was going to happen? It was it was a, a, a thoroughly unprofessional exhibition um, yep. by the way things were handled. So I think, I think that's... Yeah, I think that's the best way to describe it. it I, when I seen the vision, I, <laughs> it was so bizarre. I, don't, I didn't know what was happening. What was what was Hetherington doing? Was he pretending to be a boxer or something, or was he trying to fight? Was he mucking around? Like what? Have, do we weird. have we heard? It's all a bit weird. No, I, I, no, we, we, we've heard. There's been no explanation from from Newcastle or or from Jack or yeah. So I I don't know. But it in the end there wasn't much to it, but there could no. have been. Like if yeah. Reed Marnie gets pushed, he what, what happens yeah. if he back ends yeah. Jack Hetherington? Yeah. Then it's on. Would well, you want this happening in park footy? Would you want this happening in no. a kids' game? You know, no, of course you no. wouldn't. This is this is well, the NRL. Grow well, that up. was the result. Well, that was the result. Look at the result with um, the the Battle of Brookie boys, mm. with with mm. my team yeah. and, and and Manly when um, yeah. when Adam Blair and Glenn Stewart. Stewart were put in the bin, right? And and mm. I, I think if the referees would have had their time again, they would have they would have allowed sufficient but, time for the first player to leave the field. Um, before they before they put the other person in the bin, but um, I know different situation. But that I'm just saying, that's where that could have escalated too. Cameron, um, me and Vossi were sitting. We're, Vossi and I were sitting there watching the game. We, we were getting ready to call mm. the Cronulla game, uh, Cronulla yeah. Cowboys, and we were. Yeah. We we had the monitors going and we were watching, and we both said, "Now, so if we're both thinking it, I don't know why the Newcastle officials weren't." We said, "Jack's likely to be waiting for." Read money yes. in the in yes. the tunnel. We, we actually said, said that. We both, both said, said it. it. Said yes before it yes. happened. Before it happened. Before, we did. We we didn't even know it had happened because we only learnt of this a little bit later on, and we went yeah. What? And then and when you saw the vision, I'm thinking, why isn't a Newcastle official going? Jack, get in the dressing room. Yeah. Mm. You, yeah. Get in the dressing room, mate. Don't yeah. you? You can't be standing there waiting. They knew that. They, they, yeah. Anyway, it's even it's, if it was just to give a verbal, it that's unprofessional. Even if it was just to verbally yep. spray Marnie as he comes off, no, yep. you've got to get your player into the room. Yeah, you know, you had to see that. Now, Cameron, here's a, here's an interesting one on the text. Cameron Smith on Monday, mm. firing your questions. Jimmy has come up with a beauty, and I, I'm on board with Jimmy. He mm. says, Cameron, do rugby league teams devote any of their training time to the rules of rugby league? Do you ever sit down at any point in your, your entire career, Cameron, where you have like a a rules session, or do they just occasionally come up? The reason Jimmy raises it um, mm. in this round, it became even more apparent. How many players don't know some of the basic rules? Started last Thursday night when Melbourne totally barbecued their captain's oh. call after three minutes. Oh. Don't they know a player has to play at the board to get another that six was seconds a, or scrum feet? That was the a Warriors, shocker, what about one. Roger Tuivasa-Sheck? Like on the dropout mm. from Sean Johnson. Like mm. touching the ball. You know, touch the ball. Well, <laughs> well boys, he's just, he's just come from rugby, though. Yeah, good point. <laughs> it doesn't have to go ten. <laughs> but did you have rule sessions, Cameron? Did did Craig say right today, well, boys? We're going to spend an hour on the rules. No, any time. No, no, no. We didn't. That should um, happen. You, you know, you know where they need. It. You know where they need to know the rule, and they obviously don't. And mm. the dead ball line from kickoffs. Yeah, 
so, and it happened over the weekend. You I don't need to catch caught, it. Someone caught a ball and went dead. They, but they <laughs> went backwards. Like, isn't there? A, don't don't the coaches say? You know what? Catches stand on the dead ball line. Stand yeah. right, like right inside yep. the dead ball line and move yep. forward. Then you know where the line is. That, don't well, be going backwards from midway in the in goal area, not knowing yep. where the dead ball line is and trying to keep your eye on the ball. Stand on the dead ball line and come yep. forward, and then like it, it, it's. I don't know if anyone explains it to the players because it happens no. over and over and over again. You know what? I, I think I think in this day and age, like I don't think these young guys coming through, I don't think they're taught at a junior level, Brandy. Like you and I, like when did you learn that? What, like when did you hear a, a coach talk about mm. kickoff setups and standing on the dead ball line, like getting your props and your halves to stand – on the dead ball oh, line, it's it's yeah, and it's so easy. It's, it's easy to come forward at the ball and go backwards. Did you yeah, learn that in your junior footy days? I probably did. Yeah, I know probably I did. did. Yeah. I know I did, yeah. and, and I, I just mm. think that all the you the, take for granted coaches, that everyone else yes. does, but they don't. Yeah. Cameron, yeah, they no, don't know no, the rules. no. And and I, I laughed at that Thursday one when um, the storm challenged the uh, the touch. On the kick, head. like, <laughs> like well, I was calling going, that game. Well, I actually, I said, I, I think I said through the call. Do they? Do these blokes know the rules? I, I'm, I'm sure I said that. But we've confirmed. No, but someone's let down in the system here. We're confirming mm. that there is just an assumption the players know the rules. So you're telling yeah. me coaching yeah. staff don't actually say, boys. We're just going to tick off on, on rules today. Just a few things. They've changed your interpretation of this. Ben, yeah. show some examples. Yeah. No, you go, you go, you're going to find it yourself on the NRL website. Well, I think the, the, um, if, right, there's any, if there's any new rules, right, introduced, so mm. like a, let's just, yep. for example, over the last few years. All you know, the, the new interpretation. Yeah, yeah. The, yes. the set restart disruptor. rules. Kick disruptor. Disruptor, all this sort of stuff. I know with Melbourne, we'd sit down and go, hey, boys, look, okay, over the off-season, there's been some variations to the game, to the rules, interpretations, whatever. Mm. And we'd, we'd show some examples. The NRL actually the NRL actually travel around to the clubs too um, with a representative and, and show examples and, and what will be tolerated, what won't be. But as far as... <laughs> but that's as far the update as, to the current rule. The, the, the yes, yes, yes. To, yes. To, but to as, a refresher course on the rules. As, on the as, rule. as, <laughs> as far as the, the, the basics of our game where you can't touch a ball from a kick if it hasn't travelled 10 metres, um, if you, <laughs> you, can't, you can't catch yeah. a ball in the in-goal, then go backwards over the dead ball line, that type of stuff, I think that, that shouldn't... Well, in my opinion, that should be a given, shouldn't it? If you're at, if you've made it to the level of but playing not, NRL, should you not, not know not. that? <laughs> no, no, it's, it's not. It shouldn't be a given. I, Come I on, boys. The, we've, we've, I think we've stumbled across something. And uh, yeah. mm. Vossi, if you're looking for anything else to do, um, you know, yes. apart from shooting the fans, there's a little side games, hustle. Doing, <laughs> side hustle. Yeah, side hustle. You can mm. go around to the club, talking say, boys. Yes, we're going to sit down and talk about uh, rules. Well, off the yeah. back of your, off the back of your little fan segment, you can then yeah. have a seminar, right. Vossi. There's yeah. a tie in there somewhere. Uh, good yeah. morning, boys. Uh, my name's Andrew Voss. I'd like to present to you uh, the rules of the game, uh, starting with uh, level uh, rule one, section A. Please refer to page 23 of your books today, boys. That'd be very interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go down. Wow. You'd lose them quickly. You'd lose yeah, them quickly. <laughs> very quickly. Um, this question for you, Cameron. Morning, boys. What if Hetherington was doing it to a different player, another forward, for example, a big guy? There would have definitely been punches thrown. That, that That's probably a perception. People oh. would... Think that yeah, was the possibly. case. That's why. That's why we probably do have to take action today. You mm. know, I really do for what could have happened rather than what did actually happen. Is that fair punishment that you do that yeah. or not? Yeah, but what what what's what's he going to be charged with? Like just contrary conduct. Yeah, yeah contrary conduct, conduct. Maybe. maybe and, and look, look, I don't like. He doesn't for me, for mine. Like I, he doesn't deserve to miss games. Maybe maybe a no. fine at most. Right, a yeah, fine at I most. Agree. Maybe maybe even. Um, um, just a, a letter of concern. You know, the NRL mm. send out letters of concern. And just a reminder. Yeah, just a letter of concern. They send letters and little reminders to say, hey, guys, like, this isn't good enough. Be aware of this. Mm. Don't let it happen again. Because if, if it does, then we will be taking action. So it's just, I'll tell you what it is. It's just, it's silly. It's silly yeah. behavior. You've yeah, already been 100%. sent to the sin bin. Like, get into the, get into the sheds, do your time, and get back on the field. All right, uh, Pedro Cameron says Smith. if we're talking yes. bin issue, go on. You, you, no, you no. Throw 
Well, uh, no, I was going to say, years, after the break, Cameron will answer Parramatta's problems. He's going to sum up oh. Parramatta's problems and how to fix them in one minute. You want to stick around for that. Well, He's well, got Gary 60 could. seconds to solve Parramatta's problems. Gary tried... Well, Gary's thought deeply about solving Parramatta's problems, but came up with uh, the winger carrying it in the other arm and Daryl Hall- Halligan coming <laughs> Halligan needs to, to help to and get an <laughs> AFL coach to catch bombs. Okay, yes. after the break, Cameron Smith on Parramatta. Learning the rules is that most people learn them by watching games. So um, you'll find less than 50% of kids at junior level will be able to sit through a full game as they're busy doing other things, social media, phones. NRL players obviously don't watch much footy either. That is a very good point. Yeah, you good watch, point. You learn by watching. You mm. learn, but So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, has anyone ever watched a drama in the in-goal area off a kickoff where a player is midway through the in-goal <laughs> area and the kick goes a little bit big? Oh, maybe I should start on the dead ball line and come forward. Yeah. Does anyone, does anyone, do they watch it? Mm. Anyway. Yeah, uh, now, it we've had Gary much. of Newtown on. He's given mm. us um, some areas that the Eels need to work on to solve their problems. Cameron Smith, um, oh, yes. Parramatta Eels. Mm. 60 seconds starts points. now, Cameron. 60 seconds <laughs> starts now. How do you fix their problems? What's wrong with that? Oh, jeez. Um, oh, look, I'm just going to go the most simple way, boys. It's it's all about their attitude. If you concede, If you concede 44 points in a match... Clearly, your mind wasn't where it needed to be um, on on that particular 40 match. Now, in the second half. Yeah. Well, now in a half. Now, what what was it? Was it was it because you went to Darwin? Um, so you thought, well, this is this is a bit of a bit of a holiday for us. We're we're playing sort of outside of our our norm. Um, so the the minds are a little bit more relaxed. Was it because we're playing against dolphins? And there's no Hammer, there's no Felice Cafusi, there's no Flegler, there's no Herbie Farnworth, and they thought, well, you know, this is a team that only joined last year. We got a better footy side. We're just going to turn up, and, and it'll happen for us. Um, it's all attitude, boys. That's all it is. Now, now, take away the fact that there's no Mitch Moses. They haven't had him for a few weeks now. Um, they won last week. They beat uh, the North Queensland Cowboys. So. It, it was purely an attitude thing on the weekend where they just they didn't want to roll up the sleeves and, and match it with the Dolphins because if you look at the Dolphins, right? Okay, sure. Uh, on paper, they haven't got the strongest lineup. They got some wonderful players in their team, but they haven't got the strongest lineup in the competition. But I tell you what, they do do when they get it right. They they compete and they're always in the game. Even if even if they don't play at their best, they're always competing and having a go. So, you know, that I, I think there's a few teams in the competition that we expect to be a lot higher on the, on the ladder. Yeah. They, could, they could really take a bit of a lesson from the way that the Dolphins approach mm. every game that they play. Okay, extension though of Parramatta, are you writing them off? I, I, well, put it this way, at the start of the year, Brandy and I didn't have them in our top eights to begin mm. with. Mm. But right now, are you saying they're not going to make the top eight? Well, no, I'm not going to say that because <laughs> at this point in time, they're, they're one win out of the top eight. So I, I can't say that they're gone. And, yeah, we're, we're, we're only in there round is seven. Time. Yeah. yeah, we're only in round seven, boys. So I think, you know, for, for a lot of these sides down the bottom, um, well, there's probably a couple that you think, well, you're absolutely yeah, no chance. But, yeah, yeah but with a lineup, four. yeah, with a lineup like Parramatta, you'd expect that, you know, Mitch Moses is going to be back, what, in the next. Four, three to four weeks, maybe. Yeah. Um, if they can, if they can get a couple of wins, let's say they get two wins out of the next three. Um, although it's going to be difficult, they've got. I think they got Manly this week. So, um, but you know, it can be done. They, I'm not writing Power of Matter off just yet, boys. They've still no. got enough good players to uh, yeah, absolutely respond mate. after yeah. last week. Uh, Nelly Quarter is uh, through 17 holes with a two shot lead. Jeremy, thank you. So Nelly Quarter on her way, almost to five tournaments in a row, and I think this is wow. this is a major for the girls. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is this might be their first major of the year. So she's had an amazing five weeks. Cameron, uh, John from Harrington Park uh, points out on the text that um, Burgess' brother got uh, two weeks for throwing a water bottle from the bench that didn't hit the intended target. So Hetherington should miss at least Ooh. a week for stupidity. Um, so, you know, mm-hmm. rather than that letter, an actual yep. uh, suspension there.